the 8-4. And then there'll be one more after that. So in 8-3, which was our last day together physically uh, at Burnsville, we discuss special right triangles. Um, we had a, a worksheet or a packet of sorts that had you label the sides of a bunch of different triangles uh, using these shortcuts I have listed right here. Um, we discovered these by using what we know about squares. So if you remember, squares cut in half would give us a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And then this triangle, the 30, 60, 90, is half of an equilateral triangle. 60, 60, 60 would be the degrees. And that's why we have that relationship of half or double between the short side and the hypotenuse side of our 30, 60, 90 triangle. The Pythagorean theorem is what we use to figure out what the, um, what the value of that last side would be. So we did that in class. There's some videos online in our old materials folder that review how to get these numbers. But um, the important thing is that we have them memorized. We used these special right triangle shortcuts in 8.4 to get to labeling the unit circle. And we did that by applying them to um, two versions of these triangles with hypotenuse lengths of one. So if you put a one there and a one there, what do the other sides end up becoming? Well, this is what they become. And you guys have seen these numbers a bunch of different times. Um, these are the building blocks, the puzzle pieces that put together this unit circle that we've been using to as, as like a shortcut of figuring out the sine, cosine, and tangent of 16 different convenient values on the unit circle. And those values come from the 30, 60, 90 in these special right triangles. So the special right triangles are the building blocks of the unit circle that we created in 8-4. So this was an important step in, in getting to that process. Uh, as far as the quiz goes, just know that uh, these triangles are what give us the unit circle, and it's not bad to have these sides memorized. I'm not going to promise you're going to have to do anything too crazy um, with this on the quiz. So this is as far as I'm going to go. 8-4 is where I'll finish. 8-4 involved quite a bit. Okay, so we started 8-4 by talking about how when we take one of these triangles and we put it on the unit circle, we notice that because sine is always opposite over hypotenuse, and that the opposite side of every triangle that we sketch on the unit circle ends up being that y value, sine simplifies to just y. Okay, and then we also notice that cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, simplifies to x, and that's because that adjacent side on the unit circle um, is always the width of the triangle, and it's always that x value. Um, the hypotenuse ends up being on the unit circle, ends up being 1. In this image, they call it r because it's the radius of the unit circle. But it's 1, so it doesn't affect the denominator at all. So it's good to know where that um, came from. Um, I guess I'll finish by mentioning tangent. Tangent ends up being y over x because tangent is opposite, which is y, over hypotenuse, or over adjacent, which is x. So we took those building blocks and we applied them to the unit circle. We knew the length and the width of those special right triangles mentioned in the last video in lesson 8.3, and we put this together. So you'll need to know the unit circle. Um, and I've decided that because we have no way of monitoring whether you're using notes or not. I don't want to create a moral dilemma for you. So we're allowing the use of notes on this quiz. Um, absolutely no one should be working together or collaborating with someone. We need to make sure that these quizzes are, are testing you. This is all about you, okay? 
So please honor that aspect of it. I need you to do that. Um, but know that we are allowing you to use your resources. So have that unit circle handy uh, and it'll, it'll help things move along quite quickly. Uh, here's a quick summary of sine, cosine, and tangent on the unit circle, just like we had written above. And uh, the reciprocals, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, are there too. And you probably recall, because this is very fresh in our minds, uh, that these are the flipped version of those. So in case I don't review how to answer a question like that, just remember if you want cosecant, find sine and then flip it upside down. Okay, so some example quiz questions that you, or one example quiz question I should say that you might run into is this, and this is kind of unique. Um, they are giving us a triangle here that's actually a puzzle piece that we haven't used before because that angle is not something we've used before. That's 32. The closest we've come to that is using 30 in that spot because 30, 60, 90 is one of our special right triangles. So we don't have nice values for the height or the uh, width of this triangle. Um, but these fundamental things that we've been talking about still apply. Um, when we have a hypotenuse length of one, we know that this value right here is the sine of 32. And in fact, if you type that into your calculator, that's where it comes from. Um, likewise, we know this value right here is going to be the cosine of 32. And if you type that into your calculator, that's where it came from. Um, cosine is x, sine is y. Cosine is the distance over on the unit circle you travel. A sine is the distance up. And that doesn't change with our angles between 30 and 60 and between uh, 45 and 60, all the angles in between that we haven't talked about. This is still the case. It's just we get nice answers that we don't need a calculator to find at intervals of 30 and intervals of 45. So we can use this puzzle piece to answer a couple other questions. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what's the cosine of 148? Not on the unit circle. So again, you need this puzzle piece above. You need this to answer this question. Um, so draw a little chart here and I'm going to zoom in even more. 148, if I were to plot that on the unit circle, is going to be somewhere, somewhere around here. 148. It's not quite to 180. Uh, I'm using 180 as a reference and I'm using 90 as a reference. I know I'm somewhere in between those two values here, uh, which is great. So I've got vertical height, I've got my hypotenuse length of one, and I've got my horizontal height. Okay, what is the cosine of that angle? Well, it turns out that 148 is how far away from 180? Well, it happens to be 32 degrees away from 180. Meaning, 30, 180 minus 32 is 148, so that angle was picked very specifically. Um, what that means is that this right here is 32. Well, hey, that's nice because I know the other sides of this blue triangle then, don't I? That was the puzzle piece given to us up here. I know the horizontal side, the longer side of this triangle is 0.848. And then the shorter side, oh, I moved that. Interesting. Huh. And I can't move it back. Sorry, that was interesting. Uh, the longer side is 0.848, and that is the side that I want to find, 0.848, right there. Uh, and that's the side I want because we're talking about cosine. And cosine is the x value at that point right here at 148. And that's the, the horizontal distance we travel over. It's also important to note that we're moving left. So the answer here is negative 0 0.848. Cosine is the x value, and this is the x value 
if they asked for sine, I would have looked at the height of the triangle or the y value of it. Okay, so that was a lot of explanation. Let's do one faster so you can see it in normal speed. Um, 328 is going to be somewhere over here. I'll make this triangle red this time. So there's my triangle, 328 degrees. 328 degrees happens to be from 360, 32 degrees away. So if I zoom in a bit more, I can label a 32 right here. Awesome. So which side of the triangle are they asking for? They're asking for sine, which is the Y side of my triangle. So that is the height right here. Now in this case, that's the shorter side, and I've drawn my picture pretty accurately, so you can tell that this right here is the shorter distance, and then this red distance here is the longer one. So my answer needs to be the shorter side of this puzzle piece they gave me up top, and that shorter side is right there. So just know that the triangle can be flipped around, and, and just because it's in this position at the top doesn't mean that's the way it should be at the bottom. 0 0.530 is my answer. Positive or negative? Um, it looks like we are going down. So that's going to be negative. Negative 0 0.530. All right, tan of 212. All right, so I know this is 270 and this is 180. 212 is closer to 180. So my triangle is going to look something like this. Okay, so where am I? What point am I at? I am. Uh, let's see here. So I am over, here's my 32, by the way. I'm over in the negative direction. I think it was 838. I hope so. And then I'm going to be down 0 0.530. So I copy and pasted my puzzle piece so that it fit in the right way here. So I'm, I better double check and make sure that I use the right number here. 848. Okay. I had a feeling I was wrong. 848. So my point right here, I'll make it red, is, is negative 0.848 and comma negative 0.530. That is my X and my Y. Left a lot, down a little. And I'm using their numbers, not my old numbers that are on the unit circle. So there you go. That leads us right to the answer. Tangent is y over x. The y value in this case is negative 0 0.530. And the x value in this case is negative 0.848. Uh, I'm going to just clean this up a little bit and say that it's 0 0.530 and 0 0.848. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And that's it. I'm going to just leave my answer like that because, nah, why not? If the directions say to simplify it, then I can do that. Okay, so there you go. There's a... um. Kind of lengthy summary of 8.4 um, via some examples that you might have to do on a quiz. All right, 8.5.